Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Tammy McManus are here with me in the studio and here is what we're going to be discussing. Philippe Clement issued Rangers with a half-time warning over the dangers of Ross County before Don Cowie's side made a second-half comeback against the title chasers. Uh, I warned them that it was not good enough the first half and I wanted to see more second half. Brendan Rodgers insists Celtic will come alive at this stage of the season as the Hoops bid to hold off Rangers' title challenge with just five games left to play. Tony Doherty heaped praise on his Dundee squad after the newly promoted side booked a top six spot in the last game before the splits. I'm so pleased for them and I'm, I'm, every plaudit they get coming their way they deserve. Nick Montgomery bemoaned Hibbs' missed opportunity to seal a top half finish with the Easter Road side missing out to Dundee by a single point. That's no, not good enough for Hibbs. Um, you know, you have to earn the right to get anywhere in football, you have to earn the right to get in the top six. Yeah, disappointment for Hibernian. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. And of course, credit to uh, Dundee getting into the top six. Uh, and that's before the game which they are scheduled to play against Rangers on Wednesday, which incidentally, if it doesn't happen at Dens Park, it will be at an alternative venue, which is McDermott Park in Perth. They'll use St Johnston's ground to play that game against Rangers. Uh, well, what do we know? This is fantastic, this show. From I wish we could just listen back to all the different shows from the start of the season where we've been resolute in our opinion. Then we've had to back the lorry up and then move around and twist around. We've had some U-turns on this. This title race, clubs, Rangers, Celtic, dropping points up at Dingwall. I don't think anybody anticipated that, Ruffy. No, I don't think so. I don't think anybody for Rangers going up there at the weekend would have thought that was going to materialise. You know, I, I did think in the first half of the game the chances to win that game. There was a chance for Dessers, and I don't know why we sort of were laughing about it afterwards. You know, that, that game could have put the game to, to bed. But uh, the second half, you have to give Ross County a lot of credit. Rangers players looked shell shocked. They, they just couldn't believe what had happened. The two quick goals. And they were all sort of a looking about at each other, you know, who's going to dig us out of this hole? And there was nobody to come up with. Uh, I mean, we've looked at it and we thought to ourselves, well, it's going to be down to Celtic Park. It, it's just not because there's a bit of the jitters. What, what was your overall assessment of it? The game itself, uh, Rangers started the game comfortably, I thought. And as Ruffy says, they missed a few chances and half time. The managers obviously gave them the warning signs and they've not started second half. I thought for the standards they've set, they were poor. Um, since the manager came in, how well they've been playing for that second half performance, mm. probably uh, they've let themselves down, firstly, and the manager down. Yeah. So What's your assessment of the title race? Uh, well, they're obviously still in it. They, they win Wednesday, but it just gives... Results like that give Celtic a little bit more confidence as well, I think. And that's how when, when me and Tam were talking, we're like, the old firm don't expect them to drop any points, so it's going to come down to the old firm game, which it possibly still can, but nobody, like Ruffy says, nobody's seen that result coming for me. Yeah, even if it still goes down to uh, the old firm game, the, the, the stakes are still the same. Uh, the only difference this time, probably in the twist and the axis of it all, is Rangers have to go there and win. They have to break that <clears throat> poor run of not being able to get the win at Celtic Park, a, mean, a meaningful win. Yeah, and that's a little cushion that they had. They had the, the draw in their pocket as well, Peter. You know, until this game, and obviously yesterday, they had the draw. If they could go to Parkhead and not get beat, then they were still in the driving seat. This It gives Celtic a massive advantage. They'll know if they can beat Rangers at Parkhead. They've all but won the title. Um, and I thought Ross County totally deserved it yesterday. I thought that they... They looked as if they wanted it, they are more hungry. I think a couple of the goals they ran off Rangers players, which I've not seen since Philip Clermont came in, and they deserved it. You know, Rangers, at the end, you know, you're thinking they're going to go and put some pressure on Ross County to go and get, maybe once it went to 3-2, you thought seven minutes added, you know, Rangers are really going to push. Didn't really look like scoring an equaliser, and it's a shocker, it really is, and it puts Rangers bang up against it now. I think that Celtic were slight favourites because of the draw at Ibrox, but I now think they're, they're big favourites to win the league. Yeah, I, I'm beginning to feel like a clone of you. I had Celtic to win the league <laughs> by 10 points. So does that. Uh, with, with Brendan Rodgers in charge. Then, as it got to a certain point, I thought they just look well, a shadow of the team that was under Ange Postacoglu, and I thought Rangers might nick it because of that mm -hmm. momentum shift. And now suddenly... Um, I personally think there's still a, a, a twist to come 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's very difficult to analyse what that twist is going to be, but I, I just cannot see Rangers going to Celtic Park and winning. I just can't see it. I mean, I think it's. I've said it's advantage Celtic, and I just don't think Rangers are mentally strong enough to go there with enough quality to win it. And that's why, again, it's a it's a switch to say it's advantage Celtic. No, I, I think that Celtic have. I've got so many players in that dressing room and a manager who have been over the course and distance, Peter. And you know, Brendan will probably speak about it later on. But his comments saying, you know, this is a, this is the moment in the season that we relish. You know, we want this pressure. We we expect to win the leagues and expect to win championships. James Tavernier, Connor Golson, six years at Rangers, three trophies. Do they expect to win the league? I don't think they do. I think that Callum McGregor's James Forrest, they'll be expecting to go and win the league now. And I think that's a big difference, Peter. I don't think Rangers have got the bottle for it. And I think that was proved yesterday. You've been over the course as a title winner. You do need strong minds in there as well. Of course you do. Um, any successful team needs strong minds and sometimes you need for each other in the dressing room to be digging each other out. It's, which I think is probably dying in, the, in, the, in my experience as a coach in the game of football nowadays. There's, Every time it's got, it's got to be somebody for the coaching staff that, 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 that's digging certain players out. Well, really, you want the players to, to manage the dressing room themselves. So, um, yep, it's just the, the big positive for Rangers is they're still in it and they can still go and win the league if they win all their games. I, I think, think that, that is statement the, you made there worrying. Why? Well, because, you know, I can remember. You played alongside Barry. I thought you were going to bring us back for no, no, predictions I, no, for the I, league. No, no, I don't, I don't mind that. <laughs> Listen, we're on a roller coaster where we're all changing our minds. But I can remember you <coughs> in a team where Barry was a morning face so and so, and he yeah. he would manage in the dressing room. He would be on the park. He would be the 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 voice of the manager on the park as well. And he had that drive. And and obviously you had a lot of strong characters. And for you to say the modern player now is looking for a coach to do that, you know, instead of, you know, some... Yeah, really and I, I don't just mean at Rangers, just, I mean, yeah. I mean, as in football as a whole. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's a lot of, I, I don't think there's enough leaders in the game as a whole um, anymore. It's a surprising one. For me personally, uh, picking up on Lee's point there, my insight into it, Ruffy, is the reason is because there's not enough of the, there's not enough the, of the quality within a squad that's being signed. You know, you sign certain characters like that. I think if you look for an identikit of certain players that you want in your team, you go out and recruit them. And I don't think, I don't think there's a lot of them left in Scottish football. But that's because the standard has dropped. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you, we used to say a couple of years ago, as far as Rangers and Celtic were concerned, it was that whoever had the majority of players who know what it's like. I don't just mean Scottish uh, players. Because Celtic and Rangers have now got foreign players. I just think certain foreign players don't really get it. Do you know what I mean? Get yeah. that. What it means to the club and what it means to the, the fans. And I'm not just saying all oh, the loan players, guys that are coming up and loan. It's not the be all and end it to them. It doesn't look like that because they've got somewhere else to go. Yeah. I just feel that the, the lack of, I, I probably would say homegrown players, could, and I'm probably talking a lot of rubbish now because they're all foreigners. I'm just saying there didn't seem when that goal, when that third goal went in, Tavernier was looking at Golson, Golson was looking at Suter, Suter was looking at somebody else, and it was as if what do we do? No, there was nobody that you talk. You all, we always go back to Barry, and there's nobody yeah. there, you know, who looked as if even Lundstrom. I thought Lundstrom, he looked shell shocked. Nobody actually put it behind them and said, right, come on, there's still a wee bit of go here, we can score goals. Yeah. It looked as if shell-shocked, you know, because of what had happened. And Celtic were used to Scott Brown <clears throat> for such a long time mm -hmm. being that type of guy who just would not let the standards drop. Yeah, Brown had done the exact same job at Celtic for a number of years, uh, the same job that Barry done. I think Callum McGregor does it in a different way. He leads by example with performances, he's not a shouter. I think Bruni had that presence, had that snarling presence uh, with the shaved head. Obviously, he's not got it anymore as a manager, but he just he had that tough guy persona where I think the players at Celtic respect him and listen to him. Uh, and I agree with Ruffy. I don't think Rangers have. I don't think Rangers have got that in in, in that dressing room. Yeah. Um, even when the manager uh, warned the players uh, at half time, he reckoned they didn't pay any heed to it. Uh, I warned them that it was not good enough. 
the first half and I wanted to see more second half and keeping the clean sheet, but then you concede uh, two goals in, in five minutes or something. And then you start chasing the game. Um, so that makes it more difficult. You give energy to the opponent. They, they get a lot of energy. They, they put their bodies all over the pitch in front of the ball to make the decisive tackle or duel or whatever. And I think the last half hour we played much better and I wanted to see that urgency 90 minutes long and not 30 minutes long. Yeah, um, now, uh, as ever, you can always... I, I saw the statistic. I was curious about the statistic, roughly, that I, that I saw on social media yesterday. We've checked in it and it's 24 games. Here's the stat on both managers. Uh, Clement wins 19, defeats 2, draws 3, points 59. And this was after 24 games in charge. So it's a fairly similar situation, although... I think Philippe Clement can take great credit because <clears throat> he he managed to steady a ship that looked as if the league title was long, long gone at the start of the season. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, I think he brought a fresh air uh, and, uh, to Ibrox. You know, I think that uh, players, Rangers were playing good football, very entertaining, scoring goals. And then you could throw in, I know, I don't think any of the European figures are net that start you through up there. You have to say Rangers since he came in in Europe have been absolutely fantastic. So this is a this is a as we said at the beginning of the show, this is a result that nobody's seen coming. I, I don't think for a minute it's done and dusted because I, I keep harping on about the split. Whoever gets Hearts away and Kilmarnock away are going to have two extremely hard games because these teams are playing particularly well. Yeah, um, I mean, that is the thing that I uh, I think a lot of people, and you know what it's like, I mean, that if you are <coughs> on social media, you would lose your mind and your will to live because, uh, you know, one week to the next, it, it swings one way where there's memes, there's jokes, there's gags, uh, aplenty. Uh, and some people genuinely, I get the feeling that some Celtic fans think it's over. I think they probably will, Peter. They'll, they'll probably think that that's Rangers blown it. Um, but I... Th there might still be a few twists and turns, yeah, as Ruffy says. They're, they'll be the difficult ones. I think St Murn away, Dundee away. I think be, 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 you'd be confident that Celtic Rangers going and taking care of those games. Kamarnock away, Rugby Park. Kamarnock playing really, really well at the minute. They're yeah. winning games, not only at home, but away from home. No flying, great manager. You know, really, really strong squad in hearts. Again, go 2 nothing down, come back and score four. Lawrence Shankland, you know, playing playing some some great football. So those are the games where if you're, if you're Celtic Rangers, you're hoping that your opponent's away to one of those, or even both of those. But I just think Celtic have got that bit between the teeth now. And I, I said it in the show on Friday, I fancied Celtic to win every game for the end of the season. And I, I've, I won't change my mind on that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 to be fair, to be fair, now you know why I paused there. You've, you've had more changes of... You, honestly, you wouldn't even have survived in Margaret Thatcher's government. You've, more new terms than anybody. Um, but anyway, um, we'll wait and see on that one. But uh, but I, I, it would be remiss of me not to pay tribute to Ross County because they come up big time with the result. Don Cowie said to the players at half time, "You know, start quickly. The game's there for you." I think they they took real belief from what was happening with within the pitch. You know, even though we conceded the goal, we had created a couple of very good chances. weren't clinical enough, didn't take them. But you sense it as a player, you realise what's happening and they built from that. And the message at half time was, we've done really well. You know, we were disappointed to be behind. And it was about coming out fast and, and being positive and they, they certainly did that. And Yeah, certainly came out fast and positive. I think if somebody looked at uh, Simon Murray's Fitbit, it put in a fair shift. He, he run himself into the ground. Yeah, and I mentioned that last week, you know, he's all over the place, you know, he loves, he's one of these guys who loves scoring goals, you know, when he scores a goal, you know, you can see what it means to him, and, and obviously all his teammates as well, but certainly, yeah, I thought him in particular, he, he just dragged them all over the place, and again, I think Golson and Suter like playing against that kind of player. Yep. Um, okay, uh, 24 hours earlier, it was Celtic who managed to, first of all, uh, get the job done against at St Mirren and give themselves that four-point cushion before, of course, uh, events unfolded up at Dingwall. So 3 nothing. what did you make of it? First half, I thought Celtic obviously were the better side without creating tons of chances. Um, 
I think they got the goal at the right time, but just 10 minutes after half time, you know, Hatati, great finish. I thought he was excellent on the day. He's going to be a massive player for Celtic going forward in the running. Uh, I think they've certainly missed his creativity, running power, you know, goals from the middle of the park. Um, he takes a goal, and then once that goes in, uh, Celtic going to win the game comfortably. The weather was atro it looked atrocious. I mean, there was stuff blown about the pitch. Um, but Celtic done the job and then put the pressure on the Rangers uh, the day later. Comfortable win, um, and Rangers couldn't handle it the next day. But St Mern, we keep saying it, they've had a great season. You know, I think they'll struggle to pick up points now in, in, in the split. I think they're quite happy to get in the top six, and I don't see them going, any, going up any higher than fifth. I think that's where they'll probably sit at yeah. the end of the season. I'm sure Stephen Robinson will, uh, will pick holes in your argument on that, but as far as Celtic are concerned, um, the strange thing is, Ruffy, when he gets play and he's been harping on about this, when he gets players back is when the fortunes change. Hatati has been a huge uh, bonus for them. Yeah, he has been. <clears throat> and obviously, we am coming back, McGregor dropping it, you know, it just it makes it a wee bit easier for them. Obviously, they're going to have McGregor back again. I, I, still, I still think they're not the finished article. I still think there's good teams will get chances against them, and it depends whether you take them or not. That centre-half position again. He went off after... Wierowski. 65, is that another injury? I just saw he was substituted. I don't know what ha what happened to him. He might just be protecting him. Right, OK. So it's still not a settled back four. It's still somebody else is going to come in. You know, Yang on the other side, for me, isn't a finished article either. So I think Celtic are losing it in their wide areas. You know, obviously Kyogo scored, scored again, but I just think there's, they're, they're not they're no there where we think they should be to win, to go in and win the, the championship quite comfortably. Yeah, I'll tell you one player that's not potentially going to be available for the Celtic Rangers game, and if he doesn't make it, he makes such a significant contribution to the way Celtic go about their <coughs> business against the Rangers, and that's Maida. Yes, he's worked great. I think uh, his record in the old firm games, the way he plays in the old firm games, it just seemed to suit him. Yeah, <coughs> so I think he'll be. Well, if he's got a hamstring injury, you know, James Tavernier will that, you're a dancer. <laughs> so I think it's. The, the way he's contributed to them, and I think it sort of suit his style. He'll be a big loss for Celtic, but I agree with you. I, th I think with Hatati coming back, um, what a difference he's made. Uh, what, what a really, really good player. And coincide with Callum McGregor not being match fit or at the standard he usually is because of his match fitness. I think he's he's been he's been pivotal to, to Celtic, just keeping on grinding out results. Of course, before we get to the fixtures, and the fixtures are going to be released on Wednesday after the Dundee Rangers game, so it's a slight delay again. Uh, nothing is ever set in stone in the SPFL. Uh, Celtic's next game is the semi-final of the Scottish Cup against Aberdeen on the Saturday. And I can hear the echoes of Sir Alex Ferguson, who said they don't, ha they don't hand out trophies in October. Uh, and Brendan Rodgers' quotes from the weekend uh, with regards to Celtic, I think this is where... Celtic come alive as a club. We have five league games to go and obviously a trip to Hamden next weekend. This is the part of the season we are excited about. There is still a long, long way to go. We will have to see what the fixtures bring, but I'm pleased that we have found this level at this time of the season. That is the interesting part of it, Ruffy, is finding your level and your consistency and your momentum at a key point in the season. And, and they had lost it and Rangers capitalised and now we're getting down to the business end. Yeah, but I mean, he's talking Celtic up and quite rightly so. I mean, every manager will do that. Uh, as I said, there was evidence at the Rangers game in the second half that they were vulnerable. You know, I think the first half of the St Martin game, OK, they were OK. But at the end of the day, I, I still feel if they were to go to Kilmarnock, if they were to go to Hearts, I don't think it would be a comfortable day for them. You know, they would, somebody would have to come up with something special. But the people who are coming in are coming up with the goals. So at home, I can't see them losing at all. It's their away fixtures I think they would have to fight hard for. And do you think the away fixtures could determine the title for them? Yeah, I do. I yeah. really do. Mm -hmm. OK, um, play that back along with Tam's 17th U-turn before we get to May. <laughs> well, I think in particular if they get Kamarnik away from home, with the track record. Turned them over twice year. this season already. This year. That's going to be a nervous day. And as Tam said, 
They're playing particularly well, aren't they? One of my mates uh, the other day there, yesterday, sent me a brilliant uh, little uh, picture on <laughs> on WhatsApp. Got a feeling I might have seen this. <laughs> no, is it? Is it, is, <laughs> is it the one where he goes, and the, fix, the fixtures have been announced, and Rangers have got Hearts five times at home, and Celtic have got Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, and Man City. <laughs> and Man City. <laughs> I thought, there you are. There's, there's the humour of it all, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's uh, let's wait and see if there are indeed a few twists and turns. What do you make of it? You can give us your view in the comments section uh, below. And if you do enjoy the programme and so many of the programmes that we're offering you all the variety, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Uh, like, share it uh, among your friends. Let them know we're here. Thank you for your support across all our programming. We certainly do value it. And uh, thank you for your comments as well. Um, so, we've discussed Celtic and St Mirren. Uh, I have to say, Ruffy, I was with the Hibs players and the manager uh, last night and, you know, you, you would really need a psychologist uh, to try and pick them up one by one because they were down, gutted, 30 seconds away from a win at Fir Park and then a worldie um, gives Motherwell the draw. They blew it. They did blow it. Uh, there was one particular chance when Hibs were one and one. I think it was Ewan that was through. Mm. And Boyle was at the back post. And just squared it. I don't know why he took the shot. You know, Boyle had a tap in at the back post. But these are decisions you make in games, and anybody in the game to lose a goal like that when you're trying to hang on there and get to in the top six, it must have been soul destroying. But I think they've got only got themselves to blame for the whole season of inconsistency. Yeah, I do like the manager. I think the, the, the problem uh, that he had is, was starting to fall on deaf ears. And, you know, I've, uh, as a journalist, when you sit in a press conference, you have to sift through what I call some of the, the PR spin on it. He was coming in and, and, and talking about, you know, f fine lines and matches change on decisions that they may have been well unhappy with, with VAR, obviously throughout the season looking for apologies. In the end, it doesn't really cut it with the fans. They only look at the results, and the end result is they haven't made it into the top six. Well, the answer is just win. I think that's what, with a club of Hibs's size, uh, with the history of them usually being top six, it's a very disappointing season. Yeah, have they underachieved though? You know, it's all right talking about history and expectation and, and what a club expects, right? But have they underachieved with the quality of players that they had available? I think the attacking quality of players they've got, yeah, it would be easy to say, yes, they have. I think defensively this season they've been really, really poor and, it, and it's obviously cost them. Even before the transfer window, well, the, the four has identified how poor they were defensively and there was no real urgency to bring in another two centre-halves or, or even a couple of full-backs or somebody in the middle of the pitch that's defensively really effective um, and I, th I think it's cost them. I really like the manager um, but it goes down as a, a failed season. If, yeah. you, if you're a Hibs fan, player, I, th I definitely think it's, it's a failed season. I think the one big mistake, uh, Tam, and I know obviously from your own point of view, I mean Ruffy and, and, and Lee and myself will be picking up your column and then uh, you know just posting it on the wall next to the other ones. Um, <laughs> sack him, back him, sack him, back him. Um, <laughs> So I think the, the, the point that he did make to me, which is something that a couple of managers fell foul of, and it's not an excuse for him, um, but it's certainly something I think we should bear in mind. He lost, at a period in the season, three or four key players away on international duty, and it derailed them with injuries as well. But that's not making the excuses. That's me just throwing a, a few things that kind of blew them out of the water and they didn't get over the line. Um, but if I, if I was picking the biggest failing of the manager is when he came in, it didn't take, uh, you know, uh, the best lawyer in the world or the best football brain in the world to look out and say, their back line needs readdressed. I said it to you at the start of the season, get a defence and then build it from there. Yeah, Peter, and he's had a window to do it in January and he, he didn't, he didn't strengthen the defence, Peter. He, he stuck with the four four two for a while as well, which cost Hibs points. Eventually, he's changed it, and you know he got got a little bit better. But you know, I think every club can look back on decisions. You know, maybe VAR decisions. 
you know, offside, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, Peter, they've, they've lost so many points from winning, <coughs> winning positions. And that's just a mentality thing for me. There's no the right mentality in that dressing room. And Nick has got to find players with, with a better mentality to go and see out games, kill teams off. If he doesn't do that, he's going to be under serious pressure at the start of next season. Um, because the Hibs fans are, are scurred with this season. You know, I speak to a lot of them when I'm out and about in Edinburgh or whatever on social media. And the honeymoon period's over for them. You know, it's now a case of we want to see results. It's been two two seasons that the last three Hibs have been in the bottom six. I mean, that's for the amount of money they you know they've put into the team and the squad. That's totally unacceptable. And it's not only Nick Montgomery who's going to be getting in the neck. It's going to be Ben Kenso on the board shortly because they keep appointing the manager. So I think he's going to get the summer window, Peter. And I think he should get the summer window. Yeah, do you think he's going to be there next season? I think he'll be there next season, Peter. But I think judging on the first five, six games of next season. If Hibs don't see a clear improvement, the Hibs supporters, then I think he'll be under serious pressure. My, my biggest complaint with him is when he came in at the beginning, he championed the young players. He says, I've came for your team and I've got young players a chance. He won the, the league Tam, with the youngest ever the squad. Tam keeps telling us there are young players at Hibs and none of them have been getting a chance. I, mean, I think uh, you've got to look at that and say why. Well, I mean, for, for me, young Rory Whitaker. I got dipped run him out. in and, in yeah, and out. Dipped him in and out. But I, I, I think, I think he, you know, when you look at the players that he was able to bring in, one of the things that he has done, which I think has been better, and that's maybe through the Bournemouth connection, is there's a there's a greater technical ability in the side. <clears throat> that's the first thing. Because last year, Tam, before he got there, they were signing players who were on they were on nine grand a week. And they, you know, they never made a contribution. I mean, for the money some of the players were on Lee, they, they, you know, they couldn't kick their own backside. I mean, the boy Melkerson was on a hefty sum, mm. and he, he didn't do anything. <clears throat> I don't even know what to say. Mm. The wages are irrelevant, to be brutally honest. Yeah, absolutely but that, but, irrelevant. But, but, I know it's irrelevant, but we talked about it on Friday. Uh, the wages, in some ways, are relevant because. If, if you're paying nine grand a week to someone and you're saying, well, is this person <clears throat> better than somebody you could go and get in Scotland? You know, there are players... No, I agree. I completely you know? agree, but he's already in. <clears throat> it's a poor recruitment so, plan. Yes, and I, I think in the summer, Nick needs a hand with recruitment. He's came for football, which is completely different from the other side of the world. He needs help with his recruitment. He's, he's obviously got a... A plan of how he wants to play that slightly changed as Tam was saying. It, it was four four two. Went to even got to Ibrox Celtic Park four four two. I think he's learned that in Scottish football it can't always be four four two. Sometimes you need to flood the middle of the pitch. So I think he's. But I think he needs help with his recruitment come the summer because that will be the one that gets him off to a good start. Yeah, I, I mean, that'd be Brian McDermott. Obviously, he's he's and there's rumours he could be leaving at the end of the season as well. Yeah. So you might you might see a few changes, not not the manager, but you might see a few changes <laughs> in terms of who's, who's recruiting the players. Well, the boy Fish will go. He's going to go back to Manchester United. He's got a contract to Man United. Yeah, but he's not coming back. So you're looking and you're saying he'll be a Championship player. You're looking at the rest of them and you're saying to yourself, he's, he's got four or five in loan as well. Yeah, he needs yeah. to he needs to get a few. There's a real chance that he can keep Maeda and Marcondes. So, I think they're. they're I don't attacked. think there's any chance of them keeping my leader. Well, I'd love to see him keep. Him I, I, I think it'd be great. It's been great for Hibs, yeah. but he's he's at Hertha Berlin, and I believe he's on the region of fifteen, twenty grand a week. So unless he's going to take a big hefty wage cut to come and live in Edinburgh and play for Hibs, then well, I don't he, think he'll if, be there. If he's gone and Marcondes is gone, you, you, you're talking about he's going to have to sign seven or eight players. For me, he needs a. For me, he needs two two defenders, two big defenders, and he needs. You know, someone to help alongside the same category as Joe Newell. Better, uh, you know, maybe the, the engine, but allow Joe to... He might need three or four centre-halves, Peter, because Paul, is Paul Hallen going to be there next season? Probably yep. not. Uh, no, Stevens not. Well, Fish won't be up. there. Um, so he might, he might need three or four centre-halves, but that's the that's key area Peter Hibbs need to... Do. But it's, it's all right talking about players. It's yep. the mentality, Peter. They keep losing late goals. They keep throwing points away. And if that continues into next season... The manager's not going to be there. Hibs should have been doing what Harps have done. I agree with you. With a sign. The British spine with yes. yeah. people that know the league. So. And, and I think they've missed a trick. Maybe it's credit to Joe Savage at Harps and their recruitment policy, but 
they've got them in for three, three, four players, whatever it is, yep. for next to nothing. Or, or sorry, for free yep. and just the wages. Why is Hibs not doing that? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, maybe honestly, they have been and they've missed they've it. Tried to get Mikey Johnson. <coughs> Who? Hibs. I mean, I can't. I don't want to. Rhyme I don't off. think that's realistic. I don't for want. Me. Well, it's it's realistic if it's a loan deal that suddenly for Aye, six months sorry. can change. He's not going to buy. He's not going to buy Mikey Johnson at the time when Mikey Johnson well, we was available. We tried to get Mikey Johnson at Hearts. Yeah, and Mikey Johnson didn't want to leave Celtic. But then if he did leave Celtic, he didn't want to go to another team in Scotland. Yeah, to be. well, maybe that was the fall, the, so, the, the the point that Ebbs couldn't get him over the line either. So fantastic player, but brilliant. And now he's just out of everybody's reach in Scotland. Yeah. So he's not going to become yep. he's not going to be playing in Scotland next season, Mikey Johnson. But you know, maybe I, I, I suggested James Forrest, maybe James Forrest might look and say he wants to play he might go down south. James Forrest is a top drawer player. I don't know what his wages will be and what his state of mind is in life, but they certainly need to do what we were talking about and mentioned there is is look for players that know what it's all about, you know, and... That's what Hibs need. Yeah. Uh, by the way, credit to the manager. He, he just he just basically held his hands up yesterday. Uh, Nick Montgomery said it wasn't good enough. No, it's not good enough for Hibs. Um, you know, you have to earn the right to get anywhere in football. You have to earn the right to get in the top six. So, of course, you know, as a club, we failed to, to hit one of the targets, and that was top six. The other two were progressing the Cups, which we did to a, a good... Um, uh, a good level um, but yeah the big target was to, to try get in the top six and I've tried everything I can to, to get there OK uh, progress in the Cups yeah quarter final and semi final is that progress for Hibs well not when you consider what they've done over the last <laughs> <laughs> Hamden you know, for all the time the last you know three or four seasons I, I don't agree with that like, seeing his, I agree with obviously not hitting the top six but progress in the Cups for me is getting <clears> the finals yeah I don't think a quarter-final or a semi-final is progress for Hibs. I think you, you are right what you're saying. I think they need to get back to basics. I think the recruitment yeah. needs to be a lot better. Was I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of too many loan players at one club. See, clubs that will get five Does it not work at Dundee, though? Yeah, I can't go. Yeah, look at the sacrifice they made. Look at the state of yeah. park. Yeah. There's no paid spade yeah. anyone. They've, they've brought loan players in, put them on good wages. And, and there's a lot of managers who are miffed at that, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can quite agree with it. I just think when... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we had loans in, way back in my day, but I just feel if there's six loan players walking about a dressing room, knowing at the end of the day they're going back to where they're comfy, yeah. I just feel, you know, that the guys the guys that you had at your, and probably at your bit, everybody gets on well with each other. I, I, I do believe they're probably players, I'm not saying it's nothing against loan players, but I, I, I feel there's loan players walking about dressing rooms, knowing contact. With the nucleus of the team. You mean too many? Yeah, too many, yeah. yeah. I think they maybe come in, do their wee bit, do their training, go away, and you probably not see them again. Yeah. Can you do me a favour? Can you tell the boys what was what was George? Was George best a short term deal? <laughs> no, <it> was, <laughs> George. That was only one. That was only one. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying he was a loan deal, but he's one of those great short term deals oh, that they managed to pull I mean, off. There's not many players with phony in a Friday night. Got him gave my hand up in the hotel. Give him Only now. Only now. Give me the hand. Oh, I mean, just, we're going out. He's going out. Jeez, George, we're playing hearts tomorrow. Oh, I'll be all right. Come oh. up for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robbie. You should really, <laughs> should really write a book. You really have to. Instead of the one that you uh, eventually wrote. Um, <laughs> what about Stuart Kettlewell? Uh, Stuart Kettlewell, well, it j just left it too late. It, I think it was a case of my manager says of what might have been. Um, but we left it late overall in, the, in terms of the season and trying to get into the top six. And from my point of view, um, I can't do anything but credit the players because we went through such a challenging period of time where I think most would have written us off for a, a, a charge at top six and probably thought that we would have been more towards that uh, bottom place in the league table. And I think since the turn of the year, we've shown brilliant personality. We've picked up a lot of good points. And Yeah, great credit to... Um uh, Motherwell at times uh, this season I've enjoyed watching them um, just not enough to get them into that top six there were some games wait I think it's a story for everybody they'll look back in some games and think we should have won them but there was a period where Stuart Kettlewell was yes. under know, pressure oh, remember we were talking about you know potentially <coughs> the, 12 or 13 games without a win yeah remember? the great sack I think, I think the board take, need to take a lot of credit for that then and no uh, pulling the trigger and getting rid of him I, I think he's a really good manager 
That period of time has killed our top six hopes, no doubt about that, and I don't think he'll be allowed to go that long next season. But <clears throat> I think he's done brilliant. I think when you look at the signing and the transformation of like a Theo Bear, players like that, uh, Lennon Miller coming on, progressing, doing it in old firm games, I think uh, Motherwell in good hands with, it, with Stuart Kettlewell in charge. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Aberdeen nil, Dundee nil. Aberdeen, the greatest underachievers and dullest yeah. team that I've watched in, this, in, in the whole season. Yeah, and but for Miofsky, Peter, they would be in the bottom two. Maybe even bottom. He's carried them at times this season. He's off the boil a wee bit, you know, he's not scored. And if he doesn't score like Saturday, who, nobody else does. Um, I think they'll be fine, they've got enough to, to stay in the league. But f again, like the Hibs, you know, the, size of the, the size of Aberdeen, the money, you know, they, they, they paid actually big fees in the summer to, to get players in. Uh, they paid money. They're paying obviously big wages up there, probably the third you know, highest budget in the league. And for them to be sitting in the bottom six as well is, is totally unacceptable. When they're lucky to get a point, I thought Dundee in the second half you know, had so many chances to go and win the game. And their season's, their season's on the line at the weekend. This is that last chance to win against Celtic to keep the season alive or else that's it done for them. Yeah, eight games uh, where they've won, 11 draws roughly and 14 defeats in the league. And, uh, you know, he's talking about it's the last chance to win. I think Celtic will just wipe the floor with them. They'll get nothing in that side that, that, you know, suggests to me that suddenly there's going to be a spark. I might be proved wrong, but I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, I think they're vulnerable. You know, under pressure, as Tam said there, I think Dundee could have scored a couple. Uh, Celtic have, have a large possession of the ball, you know, and generally when that happens, they, they usually knock in one or two. I, I, I can't, that, it would be an absolute shock if they were to beat Celtic at the weekend. Yeah, um, and of course the other thing about it with the new manager coming in and how all the narrative that's being spread about, you know, he likes a high press, he's going to, you know, he want players that have got energy. Um, well, by the time he gets there, he'll be hoping that he can clear half the players that are there out. I think it needs to be. I think if you're a player at um, Aberdeen now, you, you're, you're looking over your shoulder. To, to be replaced because it's it's been a terrible season for them um, and and we're off here I, I don't see them laying a glove in Celtic to to be brutally honest in this big game but I think the only positive is as Tam says Miofsky and Peter Levin for me I know he's my pal but yeah. he, he's actually got them a, a much safer place the since he's sort of been interim. Yeah, um, as far as Dundee are concerned, obviously we've highlighted the state of the pitch uh, and, of course, there might be more than a few loan deals along the way. But, you know, for some, in some occasions we've been critical of loan deals, but Tony Doherty's done the job. Brilliant job, Peter, you know, to, to mesh all those different players uh, from different clubs in England and he signed a few boys from abroad. He's got, I think he's got two Mexican guys there, so it's a yeah. real mix of of different nationalities uh, and loan deals and for him to, to mesh all that together and get Dundee in the top six uh, is a fantastic achievement. I know Tony, I know, I know Stuart Taylor, one of my best friends, uh, number two up there. They've done a brilliant job, Peter, and they, they deserve all the plaudits that they're getting. They were favourites. In fact, I remember clearly they were favourites <coughs> to go straight back down. Uh, I think they were odds on to go straight back down. Nobody would have gave them an earthly, an earthly of finishing the top six. So. Brilliant, and they deserve it, Peter. They're another team that's dropped a lot of points from winning positions, so they could have been more comfortable. Um, but it just shows you that last minute, last gas goal for Motherwell, you know, saves them for having to go and beat Rangers on Wednesday night. So, swings and roundabouts in football, they got a wee bit of luck on the, on the day with Motherwell getting the equaliser, but I thought they were a wee bit unfortunate to win the game anyway. But brilliant for Dundee. I was an ex player, played up there. And, you know, the fans will be delighted with that. It's been a long time since some of the top six. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, Tam's saying that, and they've got a couple of Mexicans in there. I was waiting well. on a joke. Well, That's why I was giggling. I, exactly. I'm waiting on a Mexican I know, I was joke. waiting. I'm trying, he's still, <laughs> <laughs> he's still <laughs> trying to one. <laughs> think of one. But the, the thing is, Ruffy, I and we're talking about calibres of players and, and, and recruitment. And recruitment is key. For me personally, if you can get the player that you want for the identikit of the way you want to play, although I still remember that classic line from Marcello Lippi, my style is whatever players I have available to me, um, which is one aspect in the way to look at it. But I, I'd love to have been a fly in the wall when Ivano Benetti was in that dressing room and he, he's looking and he says, oh, there's Kanija, there's Nimzadze, there's Caballero, there's Juan Sara. Um, 
let's just kick off and see how it all works out, boys. <laughs> it, they did the old classic, you did it, Glenn Afton, roughly. Let's go out there and enjoy ourselves, because if you've got really good players, you've got a right good chance of winning. Yeah, I mean, that's it. You know, you can, I mean, I've obviously been slot on loans, but uh, it's worked for him. Yeah. You know, when it's working, uh, I suppose it's a good environment. And what I'm saying is when it's not working, it's no good environment. But uh, he's done particularly well. His mindset is this is the kind of player I want. He went and got the boys Shaughnessy uh, as well, you know, who's just a stalwart. And he's done tremendously well for him. And everybody that he's brought in has done a, done a bit. We Tiff's done a bit. He's come on his game as well. So, you know, well done to them. But you have to say they're there because Hibs and Aberdeen are poor. Yeah. If Hibs and Aberdeen mm. were where they were, you would think Dundee wouldn't have been in the top six. Yep, it's a good point. But uh, Tony Doherty, and rightly so, has been uh, praising his side. Today was a fantastic, you know, gritty performance against a good Aberdeen, uh, Aberdeen team who I thought were very good in the first half. But it's over the league campaign and that's where I take a huge amount of satisfaction for the players. And it's testament to the players. You know, they're an absolutely brilliant bunch to work with. And uh, I'm so pleased for them and, and every plaudit that they get coming their way they deserve. Hearts defeated Livingston by four goals to two. It was a heck of a fight by it, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it was what a game it was. Um, but just to, with the Hearts point of view, I think we, we've touched on it before, the recruitment mm. that Hearts have had to Joe Savage has been brilliant. And obviously Stephen A. Smith, with his first full season in charge as a manager, I, I think they've been tremendous. It's a sticky start to the season, but I think he deserves enormous credit as well. Yeah. Um, you only have to look at all the wins that they've managed to get. I mean, exactly. It's a, it's a the great performance from consistency, them. Consistency, mentality, I think he's put a, a certain mentality into the squad um, as well, a belief um, as well. So, yeah, I think the recruitment is the biggest thing for Hearts and they look as if they're on it for next season getting into what looks, already looks like they're going to have European football. Yeah, and a huge semi-final. Yeah, they have, and they'll, they'll take a lot of confidence from not only the way they're playing, but Rangers' performances of recent times as well, Peter. Two wins and seven. You know, lost to Ross County, lost to Motherwell. So I think Hearts will get into that, you know, quietly confident. You know, obviously the Rangers will be big favourites, but, you know, if Hearts can turn up on the day and play well, then they've got every chance of getting to the final because I don't think Rangers are playing at the top level at the minute. Yeah, uh, are you impressed with Hearts, Ruffy? Yeah, um, I think uh, they would be a bit worried about the, the two goals they lost against Livingston. I think that was unexpected. But they had the firepower to come back. Uh, and I agree with the guys. I think the, the signings are made, particularly the boy Danda for Ross County. I think he's going to be fantastic yeah. next year in that in that Hearts side. I think he might replace Spinningame. Is that fair? Because he's not committed himself. I, I, I'm not sure they're, they're quite similar players. Spinningame's more mm. sitting and... Dan does maybe like a 10 or inside yeah. winger, you'd say, potentially, but I think there'll be more. I think the known Joe Savage, he'll be desperate for more and put his own stamp along with Stephen, obviously, on that Hearts team. But Ingemi, I don't know if he'll stay or go. I don't yeah, know. I think he'll go. Um, I'm just giving you these wee <laughs> tip bits. I'm just throwing them in every now and then just to no see if he's can bite on what I'm telling you. Um, but Danda, I think, has been... I think he's good. Nah, he was good Anybody at the wants to take the ball in difficult positions mm. and, and not panic as he looks to try and keep possession. Tidy player, Peter. Yep. Um, great for set pieces as well. Great delivery. Uh, and so spittle, isn't he? Him, him spittle, Penrice. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there, there's three good players coming in. You know, obviously, they've got Scott Fraser in there as well, who's just come into the club, uh, come out the weekend. They've, they've re-signed Vargas on a long-term deal. So Barry Mackay was the forgotten man. Barry Mackay came back in. Him. He came back in. He's been struggling yeah. with injuries. And, you know, he knew how, how talented Barry is. Oh. Very, very good footballer. And all of a sudden, you're looking at Hearts' squad and you're thinking, they've got a wee bit of depth as well you yeah. know, for, for injuries and stuff. So, again, they'll get European football and they'll start next season as favourites to finish third again, I think. Yeah, it's not mathematically um, possible to say they're down yet. <clears throat> but Livingston are getting mightily close to it and it doesn't help when Teti Yenge is sent off just before the hour uh, and I think David Martindale reckons it gave Hearts the real incentive to come back Story of the season, the good and bad of Livingston oh, you've seen that all in 45 minutes I don't think I've ever came to Tynecastle and created as many chances um, but I'll caveat that with I've never came to Tynecastle and conceded that many chances at the same time. So the first two we dropped runners, get it. 
it might not be the first two, the first and the third maybe, we drop runners, but we gift them two goals. We gift them two goals and allow them, if they're having a two goal advantage, we go in at half time, two goals down. Yep, um, I think he's I think he's resigned to it now, Rough. He's got that yeah. air about his voice now, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. He's been like for the last couple of months. You know that uh, he knows what's happening behind the scenes. He knows the players that are out of contract, and he knows it's going to be even more difficult next year. That the, the, the funny point of the that game at Tynecastle for me was when the boy kicked the bottle, and. Uh, He's in the dugout and David Martindale's giving the boy absolute pelters. I'm just kind of absolute. Then the referee came in and gave him the red card and he turned into the referee going, what's that for? <laughs> <laughs> he's slaughtering the boy. <laughs> um, didn't do him any favours, hard to back and won it. Um, uh, you're a keeper, Craig Gordon. Uh, one, of them, one of them was a howler when yeah, Kelly he's, took full he's advantage a wee of it. He's, he's got a wee bit of a track record of that, if you remember at Celtic, yeah. coming out, not not reading the situation and committing himself too early. But, I mean, all he needs is games. I mean, it's OK, you can be the best goalkeeper in the world, but if you're not playing football at a level, it's OK doing it in training and doing it wee games. And, and that's obviously why they gave him the game. Yeah. No, because of the, the semi final. His hand was not injured, was he? No, I think no, he just gave him the game. Before the semi final. Yeah. So What's it like being the best goalkeeper in the world, Ruffy? Is it, is it, was it tough? No, it was just Ali that said that. But yeah. I, I, I don't believe then. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. We all believe it. We all believe it. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he actually say I over in Argentina. Did he? he took me to a press conference. How was it the wind up? Too? No, no, he took me to a press conference and all the media were there and they said oh, we've got a great team and in fact we've got a world class goalie who is <laughs> <laughs> and then you dropped the water bottle I know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the ball and the ball um, anyway St Johnson nil, Kilmarnock 2 if you're talking about a team that deserves tremendous credit I think maybe unfairly Derek McInnes was tagged with being a boring uh, manager with Aberdeen towards the tail end where they were very pragmatic and, and, and I think he was getting a lot of criticism. You look at the way he's got his team lined up now, and there's there's a bit of flair in there. There's a lot of players that we've all been singing yeah. their praises. I think the, the strikers, um, the wide players, you've still got Van Veen who hasn't properly played a part yet. I think we got money in Van Veen, you keep mentioning him every week. He's, he's a big, big signing, obviously. Yeah, I know, he hasn't kicked him off. No Greg Stewart. Gary McKay Stevens, can I get a game? I know, yeah. mm -hmm. it just shows you how well they're doing and I think if you look all the way back when Derek McInnes came in in the championship season, he stabilised and get, and improved every single year and he's got to be up there or thereabouts for manager of the year, he's got to be. Um, well, that's an interesting point for he's you. He's got to be. Yeah, I, 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 um, could you give me the four nominees? I don't, I, I'm not so sure, I don't know if he'll make it in it. He's got to. <laughs> he's, got to he's got to make it. I don't think he will. He's all but guaranteed European football. I, I, I think if you're talking about the four managers who are going to be nominees, you're possibly looking at John McGlynn's a Stonewall certainty. <sighs> you know, is 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 is, 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 is old firm or the old firm ones potentially? Well, and I know we've spoke I about this think before. Brendan Rodgers is going to get the votes. Right. So the Rangers manager. Well, suddenly you're sitting Exactly, you're sitting you don't yourself. know. You don't yeah. know. But last week we were saying he was going to get the nomination. Exactly. This is why I mean? it's like the, the ups and downs. But what's the other managers? Oh, they've got their... They've so just got, got their, Stephen Naismith. They've just got their tickets. They're expected to get third. Yeah. Are they not? They, yeah, Stephen Naismith, well, I think, will be in it. Kilmarnock's not expected to get fourth. Yeah. Are they? Listen, I just... I'm, I'm not... Well, Tony Dockery's not expected to get sixth. Exactly. Well, exactly. But, but I'm not... Uh, the, the managers have got their tickets out. I know a few of them have got their, their voting cards out. So they're going to have to vote for somebody. John McGlynn. Well, John McGlynn's the manager of the year for they're me. Falkirk are unbeaten all season I and won the league. So for me... Are you having that opinion? Uh, you didn't uh, have that opinion on Friday when I said no, that to you. No, no, no. Hey, hey he's going to the Falkirk golf day on Thursday. <laughs> And <laughs> show <Shove> you. <laughs> <Shove you. laughs> I'm, I'm almost of the opinion. I'm gonna tell you it again. He doesn't have an opinion until we give him it on the week before. And then he formulates an opinion based on that. Um, <laughs> if, if Falker finishes season un, a full season unbeaten and win the league, surely he's manager of the year. He's manager of the year for me. For God's sake, man, they've got the title wrapped up so early. What if Hearts No, it doesn't matter. 
But if Hearts win the Scottish Cup, it doesn't matter because they're all voting before it, I so know. it's a waste of time talking about that. We all know the, the problems with it. Um, anyway, I mean, it's listen, it's a tough one, but they beat St Johnston, they were comfortable. Um, and here's how the table looks with obviously that game outstanding between Dundee and Rangers. Celtic, four points. Is it going to be enough? Can Rangers defeat Dundee, whether it's McDermott Park or Dens Park? And then from there, is it all eyes on Celtic Park? Will it be the first game after the split or the second? What one are you going for, Ruffy? For to go down? No, what one are you looking for for after the split? Is it the first game or the, the second or game? Rangers game? Celtic Rangers. I think it'll be second game. Second game? Yeah. Yeah. Lee? First game. First game, I think it'll be second. Second game, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll wait to see, but uh, look at the bottom end of it now. Livingston, and then we're on the predictor league. Wow. Uh, it's, it's tight. Poor, it's it's tight, tight now, and I've just gone past you again, Lee. Oh, it's poor. And uh, Tam? Poor Kerry. Me, me and Ruffy are. Pat Lowe looks as if he'll be heading to the... The the mm. actual dinner with us. So you you you're, you're just Alan Ruffy Ruffy's sketches. Ruffy sketches. No, no. <laughs> Ruffy sketches is somebody who likes Ruffy's <laughs> gear. Uh, oh, can I just honking, man. something? Because, <laughs> for you. Because of the nature of the world now, Pat Lowe could be Patricia Lowe. So uh, whether it's a male or a female, you're going to have a great time with us. Um, I'm looking forward to it, Ruffy. Kerry's off the bottom. Then Alison now. One, uh, Alison, no one did it last couple of weeks. Is her phone chucked it? Uh, no, she's, she's just. She's doing alright. She's having a nightmare. She's just been rank rotten. Um, so there you have it. Um, that's how the predictor league looks as well. Uh, one little blow, and we mentioned this Lee uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were trying to pick that twenty-three man squad. We said ultimately there's going Three to be euros. a couple of injuries, and now Aye. Lewis Ferguson's. Fell Is that a bad off. one? He's out for the season. He's not going. Oh. To, he's not going to get to the Euros either. And apparently. Hickey. Eh? And Hickey. Uh, and he's back training, well, but he's toiling. I think. But he might he, he might be struggling to get back in. Hickey. It's part and parcel, I think, when you've got so many boys or, or bodies waiting coming up for the Euros. There's always going to be injury, but it's for Lewis Ferguson. That's for having such a good season, captain over there. You're in the top four, I think. Aye, um, that's that's bitterly, yeah. bitterly bad news. When when it's that kind of guy's your position and your jaws from for him. Do you feel sorry for them or do you have the answer? I think there's a wee bit of both, there's a wee bit of both in it, isn't there? Probably. Yeah. There's a little yeah. bit. It's like the goalie situation. Mm -hmm. See if one of the goalies had to get injured. Yeah. The other three would be going, oh. <laughs> you know, yes. and with it's human nature, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not being critical, you're right. Uh, there is a bit. I don't think any player wants to see another player get injured. No. But they probably look and think, well, I'm in, you know, I'm That's on that plane, eh? you know. Yeah, selfish and then, game. and then suddenly in a, in a sliding doors moment, uh, Tam, not only are you in, but it could change your life. You could get a big move after it if you have Aye, any Absolutely, euros. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, do we wait and see, are we going to talk about the, the games that weekend in England? Oh, title race is over now, isn't it? They've blown it. I Liverpool have I absolutely bottled it. By the way, can I just say something to you? I watched the game. Arsenal, no. Arsenal have blown it as well. Arsenal have bottled it. They've just like, given Man City the title. But, but see, Liverpool... I cannot believe they missed so many chances. They they missed so many honestly, chances. They could, Mo Salah could have won the game on his own. Yeah, I mean, I watched the game yesterday. They dominated the second half. You know, didn't take their chances. Created three or four clear opportunities. And go, you know, Man United last week, the draw, and then getting pumped during the week. It's been a bad week for Liverpool and Klopp. Yeah, Arsenal. Done in by a really good team. I bet, I bet yeah, you, Villa, Villa were excellent, didn't they? They were lucky with it too. I bet you Unai Emery just walked up that tunnel with just mm. a wee smile on his face, mm -hmm. waving to the Arsenal. He, he was coming in at the start of the season, wasn't he? Meant to be he was getting rumoured to be the Arsenal manager. Again? Just before. Unai Emery? Aye, just before. After he'd been there before? Aye, just before thinking he got the job, I'll tell you. There was, it was between the two, was it not? I never heard I that. I didn't know that. I heard that. Yeah. Um, I might be wrong, but yeah, I'm just well, saying. Uh, no, but, but, but the, point, the point you're making is, <laughs> he, he, he was asked <laughs> for the <laughs> silence, I think, yo. Yeah. <laughs> like, I no, I heard that. Definitely. He was manager before at Arsenal, it didn't work out, because I think they weren't prepared to give him the time. I never gave him the time, Peter, and he's proven, yeah. you know, at Seville, particularly Villarreal, you know, winning European trophies, you know, he farmed that Europa League for a number of years with Seville, and, if he gets him in the top four, Aston Villa, some some achievement, I know. Um, so well, fair play to him. Listen, uh, Jurgen Klopp and Mikel Arteta are all talking about waiting to see if there's going to be any slip-ups elsewhere.
And now is the moment to stand up as a leader, as a character, um, to make yourself count. Because when you win and 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 win for four months, it's very, very simple to do it. The moment is now. We have to be around when the other guys now struggle, if they struggle. So that's how it is. And for us, obviously, we, are, we have to win football games anyway. So, uh, now a string of four away games, if I'm right. So. OK, let's be brutal. Man City have got Brighton, Nottingham, Wolves, Fulham, Tottenham and West Ham. So congratulations to Man City <laughs> who've won the league. Um, I can't see them slip up, Ruffy, can you? No, I can't, but we said that about Rangers and Ross County the weekend, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was, there was a... At the English season, there was one season, there was games like that, midweek games where the big teams were going to teams mm -hmm. more down and for whatever reason. You would be astounded by what happened, but uh, I think Man City. It's the same in the English Championship, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we Leeds, Leicester, yeah. and Ipswich. None of them, none of them can win a game. Mm. So it's it's a strange time to, if you're having a bet. It's a strange time to have a bet when this time of season. Okay, when well, teams are. If you're going to have a bet, then Arsenal have got Wolves, Chelsea, Spurs, Bournemouth, Man United, and Everton. Arsenal could lose three of those. Liverpool have got Fulham, Everton, West Ham, Spurs, Aston Villa, and Wolves. I think Man City will win it, Peter. Yeah. Absolutely. OK, just before we go, um, Leverkusen. Brilliant. First title, uh, Xabi Alonso, they covered him in booze. He was happy with that. They were all celebrating. The fans absolutely took over uh, the pitch yeah. at the end of it, and rightly so. Um, and undefeated in all competitions and on course for a treble in Incredible. Germany, which is outrageous. Uh, it's outrageous. It's, it's brilliant. He's done so, so well. And you can see how many other teams were showing interest about maybe getting him. Then he's come out and says he's going to be there next year. I think the way he's transformed that club is, is I mean, poor Harry Kane. He <laughs> went to Bayern Munich to win leagues. The bigger Jonah than me. I know. But he is, actually. I know. If, if, to be fair, though, if Harry Kane <laughs> ends up at Derry City... <laughs> I'm taking everybody here to Las Vegas on a hangover tour. Um, but anyway, uh, it's not going to happen. But uh, Celtic actually, Ruffy, banked a million pounds. I think there was a, another clause in the contract if Jeremy Frimpong won the league. So well, that's where you need a good, well, not particularly an agent, but a sporting director who put these kind of clauses. clauses in. Yeah, absolutely. It's a phenomenal one. Are Bayern Munich going to win the, the Champions League? No. No? No, I still fancy Man City. Yeah. Man City. I'd say. Yeah, we've seen Man City for the treble again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow, that'd be some feat. Anyway, um, well, there's the football. Before they get deducted 375 points next year <laughs> for financial fair <laughs> play. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, and stripped of all the titles at all. Um, there's a long way to go in that uh, saga, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, listen, uh, enjoyed your company. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed watching the show. Let's not forget, we've got uh, Straight Talk. We've also got. Uh, a chance for you to join in with the journals, uh, which takes the discussion slightly further afield as well. Um, but still on football, you can uh, join us with that and the women's football show as well. Uh, and there's lots more, including some documentaries, one-to-ones that I think will occupy your time on this football channel, which is growing bigger and better every season. So hit the subscri subscribe button, if I could say it. Um, and don't forget to like, share and follow right across our social media channels. If you download the app, you'll get all the breaking stories at your fingertips as well. Great to have the guys with us here on this Monday. Thanks to Ruffy Lee McCulloch and Tam McManus. And from myself, Peter Martin, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. <laughs>